Hello guys, I'm Fright from Frightopia, and welcome back to our revisitation of the FBI's Top 10 Most Wanted Fugitives. Now when I originally made the FBI's Top 10 Most Wanted video, I think I did pretty well in the script and editing. I just kind of rushed the filming to try to get up the video out there, and I messed up on like the pronunciations. I had a pretty long intro, which people will complain about, but I'll fix that in the future. And um, I also looked down a lot in my script because I didn't take the time to memorize it. So I'm going to do a new version of that where I correct all of my mistakes pretty much. Now see, with how my channel has gotten to the size that it has, I only want to make the most quality videos that I can, and I feel like with the success that the original video had, I don't think I really deserved it. So to make up for that, I want to redo it and make a better version for those that want to listen to it. So yeah, to those of you who have seen the original, I want to apologize to anybody who I offended or anybody who just felt like they wasted their time watching that. I'm really sorry. I'm going to keep the video up for a little bit just so for those of you who haven't seen it and want to like laugh at me mispronouncing words, I guess you can look at that. <laughs> I'm also going to leave it up to keep this introduction more short. So if you want to learn on how the FBI selects who they want in the top 10, you can watch that video I'll leave a link in the description for that so yeah I want to apologize for rushing that last video and for not uploading in quite a while uh, as you can see we're in a new spot here um, yeah this is my new apartment I got a new setup I got a got a nice light going uh, we still have a phone on the iPad though so yeah yeah since I've been gone for a while uh, I didn't really have time to write a script I'm working on one but I can revisit the script and make the video better for you guys so yeah I'm going to have an announcement right now so for those of you who don't want to watch this skip to the first fugitive in the chapters in the little bar at the bottom and yeah also before this video starts I want to issue a content warning as well as explain that I am not giving any of my opinions on this all of the information that I am providing is based on things I have read off the internet so I am not making any of these accusations myself on any of these individuals. Just clearing my name, guys. <laughs> for those of you who are not watching the intro, I'm Fright from Frightopia, and thank you for watching. Hey man, what's up? Oh hey, how's it coming? What's that over there? Oh, this? This is the new Frightopia disc. As you can see, I'm all in it by myself. But that's because it's not out yet. But with the start of this video, it'll now be open. The link will be in the description. Uh, this is just a way for you guys to talk to me. I'll come and join some calls, do some chats. If you have any ideas, you can work on some just investigations with me. It's just a way for me to connect with my audience. And what's that over there? Oh, this. This is also something that will be in the description. It is my new Patreon that I'm making. It is just a way for you guys to further support the channel and help me you know, dedicate more time to YouTube, which I am struggling to do right now, but I'm doing my best. Uh, if you subscribe, you get perks such as early YouTube videos, early scripts, you get some like cool Discord perks, you get just behind the scenes stuff, and you, you can even get a movie night every month. And what's this other tab oh, I see? Oh, no, you don't want to open that. <laughs> okay, get- okay. Alejandro Rosales Castillo is a 23-year-old man born in Arizona. In 2016, at the age of 17, he worked at a restaurant called Shomars in Charlotte, North Carolina, with 23-year-old Truquan Lali, whom he used to date briefly. She was also known as Sandy, and apparently Castillo owed her some money. So, on August 9th, 2016, he texted her to meet him at a quick trip on Eastway Drive in Charlotte, North Carolina. Saying that they were meeting up for Castillo to pay her back, and when he showed up with his girlfriend at the time, Amia Feaster, things turned out to go a little differently. The next day on August 10th, Sandy was reported missing, followed by Castillo and Feaster on the 11th and 12th. On the 13th of August, Feaster's Red Dodge Caliber was found on Dolan Creek Boulevard in Charlotte, and on that same day, both Feaster and Castillo called their families to tell them that they were okay and that they didn't know where they were. Then, on the 17th of August, Sandy's body was found in a ravine in Cabarrus County, North Carolina, with a single gunshot in her head. It is believed that when Castillo and Feaster met Sandy at the Quick Trip, Castillo pulled a gun on her and forced her to withdraw all of her money from an ATM, followed by them driving her to the woods where they then killed her. 
It is then believed that they fled in Sandy's black 2003 four-door Toyota Corolla, which was found in Phoenix on the 15th in a bus shelter. Surveillance footage then showed the duo crossing the border into Mexico from Nogales, Arizona. On October 20th, 2016, Feaster turned herself into local authorities in Aguas Calientes, Mexico. According to her, her and Castillo were staying at his cousin's place in Aguas Calientes for about two months, and then one day he just disappeared. Castillo has since been charged with first-degree murder, as well as unlawful flight to avoid prosecution, and hasn't been seen since the surveillance footage on August 16th. Here is his description provided by the FBI. He was added to the top 10 on October 24th, 2017. He is considered armed and extremely dangerous. Ruha Ignatova, also known as the Crypto Queen, was born in Bulgaria and soon moved to Germany, where she earned a PhD in private international law from the University of Constance. Her first run in with the law was in 2012, when she was convicted of fraud in Germany for her involvement with her father's acquisitions of some businesses that just surprisingly went bankrupt all of a sudden. So yeah, for fraud, she was given a suspended sentence of 14 months. And then in 2012, she created Bigcoin uh, and then also founded OneCoin. Ignatova gave all these big webinars that sparked a lot of interest in OneCoin. She was hyping it up to be bigger than Bitcoin one day and her speeches proved to be successful because she scammed people out of four billion dollars. <laughs> she was last seen boarding a flight from Bulgaria to Greece on October 25th, 2017, and hasn't been seen since. When I did research originally, there were some rumors that Greek police were close to tracking her down due to her having some meetings in nearby areas. However, those are all just rumors and nothing has really come of that just yet. Here is the FBI's information of Ignatova's description. She was charged with conspiracy to commit wire fraud, wire fraud, conspiracy to commit money laundering, conspiracy to commit securities fraud, and security fraud. She was added to the top 10 in late June of 2022. Okay, so I just recorded this whole section and realized that I forgot to click record. I'm going to make sure, yeah. Okay, well, we're recording this time, so let's do it. Anyways, there's not a lot of information that I found when researching for this specific individual. However, Omar Alexander Cardenas is a suspected member of the Peter Street Gang in LA, and is also a suspected member of the Pacoima Van Eyes Boys, also known as the Anybody Killers. His nickname is also Dollar, which was, I think, was on the FBI's information, so that's very useful. Anyways, he is suspected of firing six shots of a handgun at a barber shop in Slamar, California on August 15th, 2019. A man was standing outside of that barber shop and was hit in the head and killed. Cardenas has since been charged with murder as well as unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. It is believed that he fled to Mexico where he is working as a construction worker and is considered armed and extremely dangerous by the FBI. The only footage that the FBI has provided us with is this great shot of pretty much a tree as well as a parking area where he is seen walking towards it and running out of on the day of the shooting. Here is the FBI's information on Cardenas' description. He was added to the top 10 about a month ago on July 20th, 2022 and is considered armed and dangerous. Arnaldo Jimenez married a woman named Estrella Carrera on May 11, 2012. The couple had a two-year-old son at the time as well as a nine-year-old daughter that Carrera had from a previous relationship. After getting married, they celebrated like any normal couple would. They went out to get dinner with some friends, then they went out to a nightclub, which they left the following morning at four in the morning on May 12th. They then left in Jimenez's black four-door Maserati where they were believed to get an argument, which led to Jimenez stabbing his new wife less than 24 hours after they got married. He then dragged her lifeless body into the apartment and dumped her in the bathtub, still wearing the same silver dress from their wedding. On that same day, on May 12th, when Carrera failed to pick up her children, her family reported her missing. Her body was then discovered a day later in the bathtub, and suspicion soon dawned on Jimenez after him and his car was missing. Since there was no sign of him and there was no sign of forced entry, he was then charged with first-degree murder on the 15th of May 
followed by unlawful flight to avoid prosecution on the 17th. Investigators tracked his phone calls to try to track him down. It turns out on May 12th, he used his phone in Chicago, followed by Southern Illinois, followed by Memphis, Tennessee, and then Arkansas. The following day, he then made calls in Houston, Texas, followed by Hildago, Texas. Later that year, in September, police made a drug arrest on Jimenez's brother, Humberto, where they found Jimenez's black Ford or Maserati in Humberto's garage with blood still in it. This finding made investigators believe that Humberto drove Jimenez down to Mexico. So the FBI believes that Jimenez is in Durango, Mexico, in the area of Santiago Papasquiaro, or in the area of Reynosa, Timalipas, Mexico. Here is the information on Jimenez's description given by the FBI. He was added to the list on May 8, 2019, and is considered armed and dangerous. In the summer of 2000, a man calling himself Carlos was given a place to stay, some clothes, as well as a job in Hunting Park, Philadelphia by a man named Jorge Contreras. On July 29th of that same summer, a five-year-old girl named Ariana de Jesus was reported missing. Five days later, in the basement of the empty apartment building in which Carlos was staying, the body of de Jesus was found strangled and wrapped in a trash bag. One of the shirts that Carlos was given was found all bloody and there was no sign of Carlos. Carlos's sketch was also soon shown on America's Most Wanted. Two years later in 2002, a man named Alexis Flores was arrested for shoplifting. And two years after that, police came to his residence due to a noise complaint. And after he showed the police officers a fake ID, they did a search of his place and arrested him for possession of a forgery device. He was noted to be extremely friendly and cooperative with the police and he told them that he lived in Schamburg, Illinois, before moving to Phoenix. Flores was then incarcerated for 60 days before being deported back to Honduras on June of 2005. How are these two crimes that I described in any way connected? Well, a sample of Flores' DNA was added to the combined DNA index system in 2006, and in March of 2007, his blood matched the blood found in the crime scene in Philadelphia which led to the discovery that Carlos was in fact Alexis Flores. So on March 22nd of 2007, Flores was charged with first degree murder, unlawful flight to avoid prosecution, and various other felonies. It is believed that he is still in Honduras, however it is possible that he returned to the US at some point. Here is the FBI's description of Flores. He has a notable large surgical scar on his neck due to an injury suffered in Hurricane Mitch in 1998, and he was added to the list on June 7th, 2007, and is considered armed and extremely dangerous. Jose, also known as El Gato, was born in Mexico and eventually became the leader of the Beltran Leva Cartel. His father was murdered by a rival cartel called the Gulf Cartel, and Jose blamed a man named Juan Jesus Guerrero Chapa. Chapa was a lawyer associated with the Gulf Cartel who even represented the actual leader of the cartel itself. By May of 2013, Chapa was living in South Lake, Texas as an informant for the United States, and Jose hired a crew to track him down. The crew eventually tracked him down, and two assassins known as Captain and Clorox followed Chapa when he was in his Burgundy Range Rover one night with his wife. While Chapa was sitting in the front passenger seat, his wife was putting some stuff in the back of the car. This is when the assassins pulled up on them driving a white Toyota Sequoia and the assassin in the front passenger seat jumped out wearing a hoodie and a bandana and shot Chapa in his side and his back which killed him. Three men associated with the crime have been arrested, however the two assassins as well as Jose are still on the run. Jose is wanted by the FBI for interstate stalking as well as murder for hire and is believed to be hiding somewhere in Monterrey or Mexico City in Mexico. Here is the FBI's description of Jose. He was added to the list on October 13th, 2020, and is considered armed and extremely dangerous. Yolan is a Honduran man who is suspected to be the leader of the MS-13 gang in Honduras. He is wanted for racketeering conspiracy, conspiracy for cocaine importation, possession of machine guns, as well as conspiracy to possess machine guns. He is suspected of providing firearms, narcotics, and cash to 
members of his gang that are in the United States and is also suspected to be responsible of ordering the deaths of rival gang members. He is believed to most likely be in Honduras. Here is the FBI's description of Yolan. He was added to the top 10 on November 3rd, 2021 and is considered armed and extremely dangerous. Tell was born in Varangam, Pachurat, India and eventually married a woman named Palak. They went to the United States to visit relatives when Patel was 24 and Palak was 21. And while in the United States, they were working the night shift at a Dunkin' Donuts that was owned by one of the relatives. Surveillance footage showed the two working at 9.30 p.m. when they disappeared behind some racks in the kitchen. Patel reemerged, turned off an oven, and then left. Customers who later arrived at the store grew concerned when nobody came to serve them. A police officer that was nearby came in to search the place and he found Pollock's body which had been beaten and stabbed multiple times and she was dead. When leaving the Dunkin Donuts, Patel fled on foot and returned to his apartment to grab personal items. He then took a cab to a hotel near an airport in Newark, New Jersey and he paid for a room in cash which was shown in surveillance footage. He then checked out in the morning and was last seen on April 13th, 2015 when he took a hotel shuttle to Newark Penn Station at 10 in the morning. The murder is believed to have happened due to an argument where Patel wanted to remain in the United States while Palak wanted to go back to India. Patel is wanted for unlawful flight to avoid prosecution as well as first in degree second murder, as well as first and second degree assault with a deadly weapon with the intent to injure. Since his visa has expired, it would be very difficult for him to leave the country. He is known to have connections in Canada, India, New Jersey, Georgia, Kentucky, Illinois. So those are places of interest. Here's the FBI's description of Patel who was added to the top 10 on April 18th, 2017, and is considered armed and extremely dangerous. Okay, so I was literally about to edit the Jason Derek Brown portion, and uh, it because it's been a it's been a few weeks since I recorded this, but uh, I saw a commenter told me that there was a new person on the list, like literally like right before I edited the Jason Derek Brown portion, which is probably the longest portion that would have been in this video. So thank you to whoever did that. I really appreciate that. So the person that replaced him is Michael James Pratt a man originally from New Zealand who moved to San Diego where he owned and operated Girls Do Porn and Girls Do Toys between the years of 2012 and 2019 where he made about 17 million dollars. During the operation of these companies, Pratt and his colleagues tricked and preyed upon several adult women and minor girls to perform orgasm acts on camera. The way that they found these women were by posting fake modeling jobs online, which these people accepted thinking that they were going to do just clothed modeling jobs. These women were promised that these videos would not be posted online, and some of them were not allowed to leave until these videos were made. A federal warrant was issued for the arrest of Pratt on November 6th, 2019 for a bunch of just numerous felonies that uh, I'm sure YouTube would hate if I said them, so you can assume what they are. They're just truly disgusting and despicable acts, so. Here is the FBI's information on Pratt. This gross loser was added to the list in early August of 2022. Okay, I saved this entry for last because even though he was captured, he is still technically on the list because nobody has replaced him yet. So yeah, like his picture on the website has like a red captured on it. So you know he's captured, so yeah. Anyways, even though he's been captured, I'm going to briefly describe why he was on the list to begin with. Rafael was a Mexican drug lord who was the leader of the Guadalajara cartel in the 1970s. He shipped large amounts of marijuana into the United States and is responsible for the kidnapping of DEA Enrique Camarena, as well as pilot Alfredo Zavala Alvadar. Due to Camarena being a undercover agent who helped burn over $160 million of Rafael's marijuana. They were killed and writer John Clay Walker was also kidnapped, as well as dentistry student Alberto Redlet when they accidentally stumbled upon a group of the cartel members in a restaurant. Rafael then fled to Costa Rica 
where he was soon captured and sent back to Mexico where he was sentenced only 40 years for murder. This caused his cartel to eventually break apart and he was released from jail on August 9, 2013 when the state court concluded that he was tried improperly. The United States obviously wanted Mexico to re-arrest him, however, Rafael was nowhere to be found. He lost his final appeal to avoid extradition to the United States on March 27, 2021, and was eventually arrested in Mexico on July 15, 2022. He was originally put on the list in 2018 and considered armed and extremely dangerous, and the reward offered was by far the highest, at a total of $20 million. Also, it's a brief side note, I don't know why I didn't mention this in the first one, uh, his story is shown in the TV show called Narcos, which is a very great watch. I knew that before, I just forgot to put that in my notes, so yeah, check that out if you are interested. So yeah, that was the FBI's top 10 most wanted fugitives revised. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you guys so much for your patience. I know it's been a while since I uploaded my last video, and I also wanted to apologize for all the mistakes I made in the original video of this. As a content creator, I hold myself to a pretty high standard, and I admit that I rushed that last video. I promise not to do that again. Uh, that was my third video. I'm not gonna use that as an excuse though. I should have. It literally takes like five seconds for me to look up how to pronounce a name, and I just didn't do that. And it's not that hard to look at the at the camera when you're speaking. I don't know. You just memorize the line before, and you do it. But I don't know. I, I don't know why I didn't do that. But yeah, once again, I recommend that you guys check out my Discord, and if you want to support the channel, join the Patreon. It would be a big support to me, and also I'd appreciate if you liked, subscribe, and comment, because once again, I'm Fr Frytopia. Thank you for watching.